Hey guys, what's up? Bumby TV. So today I come here with a new reaction, guys. Guys, today we'll be reacting to an amazing video. This is super, super amazing. I feel I need to check this out to you in the sense that this is actually about Mohammed. So please be unto him. Sorry, pardon me. Guys, this is gonna be. They also make you cry for Mohammed. Please be unto him. It wasn't written here, but I need to add it because. I won't say because you guys want it, but because I feel that is the right thing to do. That's how he is called. So that's how I should call him. Guys, this video is actually sponsored by Romy, guys. The main test possible, guys. Right? Check this out. Like, check my outlook. I, I think I braided my hair, yes. So tell me what you think about the hair if you want to take it off or leave it. I want to make a suggestion about my hair, guys. So, guys, today. They are running an amazing promo guys. You're gonna get 75% off any product you buy from the store right now. So I think the end of towards the beginning of January, guys. They're doing the Black Friday and it's gonna be amazing. That they wanna sell out to that store. So guys, they're gonna give amazing promo guys. This is gonna be crazy. I don't know how to explain to you. I have done my shopping myself and I think you should check it out. Like they have amazing shoes, amazing dresses amazing clothes men and female clothes is i just don't know i don't i don't really want to hype it we're gonna get amazing clothes with good quality fast shipping like that fast shipping is supposed to be there guys they ship around the world so check them out and guys i'm gonna be doing the cyber monday and black friday i'm gonna get 15 percent off when you use bambi tv huge offer Check them out. Guys, let's go straight into the business, bro. We are so my from the idea of empathy, let alone the practice of it, that we don't sometimes even know what the word means. We know it sounds something kind of like sympathy. Sympathy is to understand where somebody else is coming from. To acknowledge somebody else's pain. Empathy is to feel their pain to feel their pain. The Prophet ﷺ exhibited this beautiful, unbelievable quality of empathy. And I want to share very quick rapid fire, so try to stay with me. I just want to share a couple of examples of this empathy in regards to different people. How he would practice his empathy with different people. It didn't matter who it was. When Ikrimah, the son of Abu Jahl, Abu Jahl was the man who had declared war against the Prophet ﷺ, the Muslims and Islam. He had killed Muslims just for believing. He had tortured Muslims just for believing. And he was at the head of multiple plots to assassinate the Prophet ﷺ. He eventually led an army into the battlefield with the intent of killing the Prophet ﷺ and as many Muslims as possible. This man made it very clear what his position was in regards to the Prophet ﷺ and Islam. And eventually died with those same convictions. His son who had fought by the side of his father and in fact continued his father's work after his father's death. He is now coming to Mecca to meet the Prophet ﷺ after the conquest of Mecca. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he receives the news that Ikrimah is, has entered Mecca and he's on his way to see you, the Prophet ﷺ turns to his companions and he says, his father's name was Amr bin Hisham. And they used to call him Abu al-Hakam because he was a leader of his people. But the Muslims used to call him Abu Jahl because of his actions and his conduct. The Prophet ﷺ turns, he turns to the Muslims, the believers, and he says, Ikrimah is coming. And I am hopeful that he will embrace and accept Islam. In his presence, none of you should refer to his father as Abu Jahl because it would hurt his feelings. Even if he becomes a Muslim, and he recognizes that his father was wrong in his beliefs and his ideas and in what he did. It is still his father and it would hurt his feelings to hear people, his new brothers and sisters in faith, to refer to his father as the father of ignorance. So do not refer to him as Abu Jahl in the presence of his son Ikrimah. This is the graciousness of the Prophet this is his empathy. He was able to put himself into Ikrimah's shoes and understand how he would feel in that situation. One of the main conspirators against the Prophet ﷺ, the head of the Munafiqun, the hypocrites, in Medina, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Sulul, 
When his son comes to the Prophet ﷺ saying that my father has died. And I know that he was completely opposed to you. And he said terrible, reprehensible things about you. But he was my dad and I worry about him. The Prophet ﷺ on the spot removes his shirt. Takes off his own shirt. And he gives it to him and he says, wrap him in this. Use this as his shroud and bury him in that. What would we do to have the shirt of the Prophet ﷺ? Can you imagine being buried in the clothing of the Prophet ﷺ? What an honor. What a blessing. And it, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear, this would not forgive his sins and what he had done wrong. But the Prophet ﷺ at that time is thinking of the son and putting himself in the son's shoes. Imagine what he feels like losing his father. That's empathy. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Very touching story His grandson Hussein Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu The son of Ali and Fatima Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhuma Hussein Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu He was the younger of the two brothers Hassan and Hussein Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhuma May Allah be pleased with both of them The younger one He used to stutter The younger one He used to stutter He had a very severe stutter to the point where he could not even complete a sentence. It would take him forever to finish a sentence. And what makes it even worse is as a child, this is very, very traumatic and very detrimental to the development of a child. What makes it even more difficult is the fact that the older brother, Hassan radiallahu anhu, was very, very eloquent and well-spoken and a very gifted public speaker. Wow. So think about the pressure that that put on the younger brother, stuttering so much. And so he used to stutter so much. And you know when kids start to get a little bit older, they're four or five years old, they'd start to develop a little bit of, you know, courage and they like to talk. One time, one time the Prophet ﷺ is sitting with quite a few companions and his grandsons are sitting with him and the younger one who stutters, he starts to chime in and say something. Because they love their grandfather, they're used to talking to him, he starts to say something. And the Prophet ﷺ used to afford each and every person so much respect that when somebody would speak, he would become quiet. He would not just turn towards them with his face, he would turn towards them with his chest. And he would look at them while they spoke. And so he starts to speak and the Prophet ﷺ stops and turns towards him. And so everybody there also starts to listen. And the kid is stuttering so badly that it starts to become awkward. And some of the people naturally, not viciously, not maliciously, some of the people naturally, they start to kind of exchange some glances, almost feeling bad for the kid. Because he cannot even get through a single sentence. It starts to get really kind of like awkward. And the Prophet ﷺ never once interrupts him. He does not finish his sentence for him. But the companions, they say, they looked at the face of the Prophet ﷺ on how is he reacting. And they said he had a big old smile on his face. And he was looking at Hussein radiallahu ta'ala who's smiling and listening to him quietly. He didn't care if it took five minutes for him to finish what he was saying. But he let him finish what he was saying. And when he was done finishing, when he was finished saying whatever he was saying, the Prophet wasallam at that time turns to everybody else that is sitting there because everyone was so weirded and awkwarded out. He turns to everyone and he says, an ammihi Musa. He inherited this from his uncle Moses. Referring to Musa and the fact that he used to stutter. That don't feel bad for him envy him that he shares a trait with one of the great prophets of God Musa alayhi salam he turned that negative into a positive putting himself in that child's shoes and realizing what he needed at that time he needed love and support and acceptance for who he was for what, what, however he was and the last story about empathy that I'll share here is a very touching story. Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a companion of the Prophet ﷺ, he was an Ansari. He had gone out for one of the campaigns, the military expeditions. And when the, the Prophet ﷺ did not go on this particular journey, so when they would return back, he would go outside of Medina to welcome them back. And all the kids whose fathers had gone out, they would also go out there to welcome their fathers and their brothers and their uncles, etc., home. So they're out there and they're all waiting for people to come back. And as slowly everybody is coming back, and the Prophet would wait and then he would come at the back of the army. 
he would be at the end watching over everybody, the shepherd. And the, the son of Bashir radiallahu ta'ala who is standing there, climbed up on a rock looking for his dad. And he sees people keep on coming. He keeps asking, have you seen my dad? Have you seen my dad? And he doesn't see his father. Finally, when he sees the Prophet sallallahu riding in the back, he realizes that means my father did not return. And he starts to cry. This child starts to cry because he realizes my dad isn't coming back home. He died. And the Prophet Sallallahu stops. He's riding his animal. He stops and he picks him up and he hugs him and he continues to hold him until he stops crying. He calms down. And then he says to him, he says, Ama tarda an akuna ana abak wa aisha ummak? Don't cry. Don't worry. If you need a father, I will be your father from today and Aisha will be your mother from today. To embrace somebody else's child as your own. Empathy. And look how it beautifies a person's conduct and character. How it beautifies a person. This quality is central to the prophetic character. You know, when it talks about empathy, guys, like putting yourself in someone's shoes is, is actually very, very hard. It actually breaks you. You kind of feel things you're not supposed to feel. I know the one thing I'm really scared of is losing any part of my family. I haven't ever lost anyone close to me. I don't want to go through that pain. I don't feel I can be it. I don't feel I can be it. I, don't, I, I can't take it. I can't, I can't. I don't, I don't really get attached to people much because I don't like people going away from me. It hurts really, really bad. And in the sense that this actually happened, this, the last story actually drifted my mind to the day I reacted to a Russian video and the boy said his father and his mother was killed in front of him and like, I think I couldn't continue with the video. I nearly broke down, but I tried my best to hold it. But like, I'm just like, I, mean, I was thinking like, how is he going to overcome this? Like how? It's really heartbroken. Losing your parents is, is devastating. Imagine you losing them in front of you. Like it's that video, like it sports my day that day, and I see I'm still feeling that kind of irritation. I don't really get the reason why some people will be fighting some kind of unreasonable war. I will say that because some more are not really called for, for like it can be averted, like you are not supposed to do this, you can actually do this to prevent this, just do it. This is actually very amazing, guys. I feel based on things I've listened to about the Prophet, he was really, really a nice man. He gave in his all for his people. He, he, he was that kind of person that stood for his people. Based on what I've listened, he, he understands these are my own. I'm supposed to take care of them. He, he, he stands out as the king trying to see his people. And it's a really amazing because you trying, you knowing that you can cry on your king's shoulder is just something beautiful. I feel Prophet Muhammad was like the father of them all, and it was cool. It was great, but I don't really still get the reason why Christians don't really talk about Muhammad peace be unto him. I don't really get the point why we don't talk about it or why it wasn't. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but it's like it wasn't talked about and it's kind of strange why it wasn't talked about. But guys, yeah, come to the end of this video, guys. Please sure to like, share, subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace.